Does the wood species matter when it comes to the pellets you use on your pellet smoker? I'm testing it out in this video by smoking three briskets on my Pits and Spits Maverick 1250 with the same brand of pellets. But I'm smoking one brisket with cherry wood, one with hickory, and one with mesquite, and I'm gonna compare them to see if there's a difference in flavor, so let's get smoking. In a previous video, I compared the smoke flavor of some different brands of pellets, and I concluded that the brand of pellets does have a small impact on smoke flavor, but pellet grills produce such little smoke flavor that the difference between brands is barely noticeable. And after that video, I got a couple of comments from viewers asking me to compare different wood types within the same brand of pellets. In other words, does the type or species of wood used in the pellet really matter? For example, we know that getting a premium brand of pellets like Lumberjack or Naughty Wood pellets will give us a little bit more smoke flavor than a Traeger pellet, for example. But within those brands, does it really matter if you're choosing cherry or hickory or oak or mesquite? Is that decision really going to matter? That's what this experiment is about. So, for this experiment, I trimmed three choice grade briskets and seasoned them with Killer Hogs Texas barbecue rub. I trimmed these briskets a bit weird for another experiment, so just ignore the fact that they're missing the flat under the point. We're just looking at smoke flavor in this video anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Then I placed the first brisket in my Pits and Spits Maverick 1250 with a large water pan below it. Now for this first brisket, I'm using Furtado Farms 100% pure cookwood pellets. This is like the premium Canadian version of Lumberjack or Naughty Wood pellets. Now I'm using cherry wood for the first brisket because it's generally accepted that cherry wood has a really light smoke flavor. And for the second brisket, I'm using hickory, which is sort of a middle grounds in terms of smoke flavor. And third, I'm using mesquite, which is like the big granddaddy of smoke flavor. It's got the smokiest flavor profile of all of the different species of woods. Thank you to Minnesota Fire and Slice for giving me this smoke spectrum idea for this experiment. He's got a great Instagram channel with amazing barbecue content. You guys should go check it out. He's a wizard on Instagram. He's making amazing barbecue over there. I will link his account in the description section below. So we have a pretty reasonable plan for this experiment, but I wanted to mention before we get into it that there are a couple issues with it. The first issue is that we're smoking all these briskets on different days. I only have one of these Maverick 1250 pellet grills, and I want to use the same pellet grill for all three cooks to keep things consistent, but I'm cooking one, then refrigerating it, then I'm cooking another one and refrigerating it, then I'm cooking another one. So is the first brisket getting smokier or possibly less smoky in the fridge while we cook those other two briskets? I don't know, that is a problem with the experiment. Second, I'm only using one brand of pellets in this experiment, so will the conclusion carry over to different brands? Not sure. And third, I'm only using one method of cooking a brisket on a pellet grill, of which there are many. I'm also not using a smoke tube or tray to add extra flavor. So will the results from this experiment using one method transfer over to using a different method? Also don't know. So there are some issues with the experiment, but no experiment is ever perfect. And I do think we're gonna get some good results that are probably reasonably transferable to different brands and different techniques of smoking a brisket on a pellet grill. But you guys can decide and let me know in the comment section below. This first brisket, the cherry pellet brisket, is going to smoke overnight at 185 degrees, as low as the grill can go for 10 hours. The low temperature is going to allow the pellets to smolder and create more smoke flavor and bark on the brisket. So at least at least we have a chance to get some good smoke flavor on these briskets. Then the next morning, the brisket's temping around 150 degrees Fahrenheit and it has some decent color. So I'm refilling the water pan and cranking the temperature up to 300 degrees to render the fat cap and finish the cook. Three hours later, the brisket is probing at 190 degrees internal. So it's getting wrapped with tallow and clarified butter in butcher paper. And then I'm wrapping it again in foil and holding it at 150 overnight in my sous vide holding chest for 18 hours. After I finished the cherry brisket, I refrigerated it. I started the hickory brisket. I refrigerated it, and then I did the mesquite brisket, and then I reheated all of the briskets on the final day for the taste test. Before we get to the taste test, I want to thank Pits and Spits for sponsoring this video. Pits and Spits is a made in Texas manufacturer of ultra high quality offset smokers, pellet grills, charcoal smokers, and much more. They sent me this Maverick 1250 pellet grill, and I've been using it every week to make the best briskets I've ever made on a pellet grill. With the optional smoke cage attachment, the Maverick allows me to make offset quality briskets on a pellet grill, which is something I never thought I'd be saying, but the smoke flavor, the fat cap rendering, and the even cooking, all of it really lines up in this machine to really help me make amazing Texas-style briskets with all of the convenience of a pellet grill. The other thing I really appreciate about this cooker is how solidly built it is. It's fully welded, beefy, 
thick steel design really retains a lot of heat when it gets up to temp and it results in more even cooking temperatures. It also has a fully slide out bottom and top rack, which allows me to put a large water pan below my briskets, which is absolutely essential to creating great briskets on a pellet grill. This thing is an absolute beast and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a real pellet grill with quality that you can pass down to your kids and performance that knocks cheaper pellet grills out of the park. I'll put a link to the Maverick as well as the smoke cage in the description section below for you guys to check it out. All right, let's get back to the taste test. All right, guys, so we got the brisket here that I used the cherry pellets on. So we're gonna start with this and then we'll move on to the hickory and then we'll move on to the mesquite because I think the cherry will be the lightest and then followed by hickory and then followed by mesquite should have the heaviest flavor. If any of these have any flavor at all, we'll see. Okay, we'll give this guy a slice right down here. Now, I trimmed these guys a little bit differently. I actually cut a lot of the flat out from the bottom of the brisket, so it's just kind of the point here, and the flat starts there. So I'll cut right in the middle here. I'm always testing stuff out and just trying different stuff. So could be a good way of doing it, could be a bad way of doing it. So we got the uh, point here, and now we'll just start making really long point slices. Okay, there's a nice shot of the point. Pulls apart quite nicely, has a little bit of tug, but it's still pretty good. So let's give this guy a taste. Again, this is the cherry wood. I do smell a little bit of smoke flavor. It's being really overpowered by the other scents of the brisket, the beefiness, the salt, the pepper. But I get a hint, a little hint of smoke. I'm gonna try one of the burnt ends here. I'm not really getting any smoke flavor at all, guys. I can smell a little bit of smoke on the brisket, but in terms of smoke flavor on my palate, pretty much indistinguishable from just the taste of the meat. I can't taste any smoke flavor at all. So we're gonna move on to the brisket that was smoked with the hickory pellets now and see if there's more smoke flavor. All right guys, we've got the hickory brisket here. Okay, so first impressions of the hickory brisket, it looks a lot darker than the last one we looked at, which is interesting. So let's slice into this guy. And I'll give you guys a look there. It's looking nice. Let's cut some point slices. We'll do burnt ends here. And we'll take a look at this guy. It's looking pretty nice. Pulls apart pretty easily. Let's give it a taste. Getting a little hint of smoke flavor, which is good. I'm gonna taste a burnt end here. I'm getting a little bit of smoke flavor on the hickory brisket. It's very subtle. The brisket does smell like smoke, but it's just very subdued when I actually eat it. Probably because you're getting such a thin band of the bark on any given brisket slice, and if there's not a lot of smoke flavor on there, you really don't taste that much. But this one I would say is smokier than the cherry brisket. So that's a good thing. That's pretty much in line with what I expected but still nothing really to write home about. I mean, my offset smoker briskets are obviously a lot smokier than this. So, a little bit of smoke flavor on the hickory, but not a lot. Okay, let's try the mesquite brisket. Okay, here is the mesquite brisket, so let's unwrap this. So, you guys will notice this immediately. The bark is a lot darker than the last two briskets we looked at, so that's a good sign. I hope this is smoky. I really hope this is smoky. Even the tallow is kind of blacker than the other briskets. Okay, let's slice into this guy. Slicing really nicely. Let's take a look at it. Get some tallow on there. So there is the point. Let's get a slice of this guy. Burnt ends and some point slices. So let's try out the point here. I think I'm getting some smoke. Let's try a burnt end. I'm definitely getting smoke flavor on this one for sure, 
So my conclusion on the mesquite brisket is that you can definitely taste the smoke flavor. It's way more powerful of a flavor than the last two I tried, either the hickory or the cherry. Now it has that really potent mesquite flavor that kind of stings the nostrils if you overdo it on mesquite, but it's very subdued here because we did it on a pellet grill and it's just very light. So that potent mesquite flavor doesn't overpower the brisket. In fact, it kind of helps it because it's adding smoke flavor to something that typically doesn't have a lot of smoke flavor. So I think mesquite actually is a pretty good pellet to use if you're smoking a brisket. And I think I'm gonna be using them going forward because it's better than not having any smoke flavor at all. With the cherry and the hickory, I could barely taste the smoke flavor. And I would go so far as to generalize that whether you're using peach or oak or apple or pecan or any other type of pellet wood that is not mesquite, it's probably going to be pretty subdued and it's probably going to have results similar to the cherry and the hickory briskets that I did in this video. So I'm almost willing to say that it's probably a good idea to use mesquite in some sort of blend. Maybe you blend it with cherry or oak or hickory, but it gives really good flavor on a pellet grill and I think I'm going to use it going forward. So. That's kind of my conclusion for this brisket. Although, I'm going to be honest with you guys, even with the mesquite brisket, it's not as smoky as an offset smoker, obviously. I think to get to that next level of smokiness, you need to use something like maybe a pellet tube. Just use it lightly because you don't want to overpower the brisket and get that acrid type flavor from the low smoldering temperatures that those pellet tubes and trays use that creates kind of bitter smoke, but it does create some smoke flavor and I've used it in moderation in the past and those trays and tubes do work pretty well. The second thing you can do is you can use something like the Pits and Spits smoke cage and that definitely adds wood fired smoke flavor to your brisket that approaches and can sometimes even get similar to or identical or even better in some cases than an offset smoker brisket. So does the type of pellet wood matter? That's the question for this video. And my conclusion would be that yes, it definitely does matter, but only if you're considering mesquite versus everything else. I think there's one bucket which is cherry, hickory, peach, pecan, oak, all of the other flavors, and then there's mesquite, which is kind of in a realm of its own, and it actually does produce a lot of good smoke flavor as long as you do that low and slow overnight smoke. The rest of them, I mean, the cherry, I could barely taste it. The hickory, I could barely taste it. With other pellets that I've used in the past that aren't mesquite, I can barely taste any smoke flavor. But with these pure mesquite pellets, I can definitely taste some smoke flavor. And because it's a pellet grill and it doesn't produce a lot of smoke flavor anyway, it's more subdued and it doesn't overpower the brisket with that harsh mesquite flavor. So I'm going to be smoking briskets with mesquite pellets or maybe I'll blend them with other pellets going forward. That's what I'm going to do, but I'm interested in what you guys think. Let me know in the comments section below whether you think wood type for pellets actually matters, whether you agree with my conclusions or you disagree. Please let me know and I will respond to you in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you in the next video and if you haven't already, join my Patreon. I'll link it in the description section below great community there. You'll get instant access to me and a great community of barbecue nerds like myself. You can follow me on Instagram. We have a Facebook group called the Smoke Trails Barbecue Nerds Facebook group. And you can also just get involved by subscribing and liking and dropping a comment below. I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching and happy smoking.